Uh, and the biggest one is mindset. You know, to me, the thing that has really become fascinating, you know, the reason there's not a lot of content that I put out between 2011 and 2014, if you go back and look at the internet, is because I needed to go run and build VaynerMedia again for myself, because after writing Crush It! and speaking a little bit, from 2009 to 2011, I was starting to get into a place where people were talking about me and calling me a speaker, or a motivational speaker, and, or an author, which is super fine and, and an incredible thing to do, uh, but for me, my pride is in being a practitioner and being an entrepreneur and being a CEO. I needed to build another $100 million plus business. Really, to be frank with you, I need to feel comfortable standing here and spitting my two cents on things. I think that you need to have an execution other than ideas to have the audacity to stand up here and expect people to waste their time and money listening to what you have to say. And so I'm proud that over the last six years I've been executing VaynerMedia and while I do this Gary V thing, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, the CEO of a $150 million holding company from scratch is exciting and interesting and it really has become obvious to me why that's happening and it's around mindset. I, I think that there's way too many people in this audience that are in the excuse business. I've, uh, and yeah, and it's, and it's tough because I'm empathetic. There's always things. You know, you could have two parents that were drug addicts. You could have lost your parents in a car accident when you were a kid. You could have had your money stolen to you by a partner. There's so many things that happen in life. I, I'm super empathetic to it. The ultimate problem is though, is that the market, the world doesn't care, right? There, there's so much dwelling going on, so many reasons why not, and the thing that has been really interesting to me is that if you asked me what works for me, it's optimism and gratitude and positive mindset. Like, it's really interesting. To me, life is pretty binary. It's either black or white, it's either yes or no, and the one that matters to me the most is you're either on the offense in your life right now or you're on the defense. You're either coming up with reasons why not, all this technology, all this stuff, why not, or why yes, all this technology, all this stuff. You're looking at things and you're making a decision. And so for me, a lot of what I've been thinking about is mindset and why optimism works. Literally, seven minutes ago, in the, in the green room, I'm on the phone with executives at VaynerMedia, I'm getting texts of a scope that we expected to sign, failed, million dollars, literally counting on a million dollars, gone, zero, not happening, right? Another pitch, we were in the final two, eight million dollars, didn't get it. Literally in 47 seconds step back in the back room, I lost nine million dollars. <laughs> and I'll be very frank with you, I'm fucking pumped about it. I genuinely like losing, I like learning from it. I was like thinking about like why, what happened, where'd we go, where was the misstep, why? Like it's really incredible and look, when you can afford to lose it, and I'm sure people are thinking this, it's easier, I get it, it's not like I lost nine million, Vayner lost nine million in revenue, but to me, it's not about anything other than mindset. And so if I got anything out of this, I'll go into the tactics, I'll talk to you about social in a minute, I'm about to tell you why Facebook and Instagram, you know, I did a lot of homework, on Saturday about the Australian market on my thesis is around influencers, Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat. Let me save you a lot of time. Everything that you've been hearing me talk about. How many people here consume my content? Raise your hands. <laughs> Thank you, that was awesome. I'm just gonna do that again. How many people here consume my content? Yeah. <laughs> so, here's what's interesting. Literally everything that I'm spitting comes obviously from an American-centric point of view. That's where I operate. Obviously we have a UK office, we're looking at Singapore, we're doing other things. but. I'm aware that outside of Russia and mainland China, most most of this stuff actually works. Maybe there's a couple of different nuances. What fascinates the shit out of me is the consumption patterns of of the Australian and New Zealand market and the underpriced nature extremities of what I believe in. Literally, everything that I've been talking about for the last year, you can add a additional 20 to 40% tax of upside. It is literally 20 to 40% even better in this market And I get so pissed when people are in any place besides the US market or China, where they're like, well, it's a smaller market, it's this, that, and the other. That's where all the upside is. You can only compete against what you can compete against, right? And so I believe that we are living through the greatest era to be an entrepreneur ever. I think the internet is grossly underestimated, and I think there's a ton of opportunity, but 
if you ask me what I would want to leave with from this talk today, it's to shift one or two person's mindsets. You know, to me, it's an incredible feeling to stand up here and expect nothing from nobody and take full responsibility for everything. I, the teleco company that gave it else and we lost it and we, in the back room, the eight million, I spent zero days and zero seconds on it. I was not part of the pitch, I was not part of the process, I empowered all my people. I saw the news in the back room and I took full 100% blame and responsibility. I am fascinated by your upbringing, both your parents and the neighborhood and the siblings and the friends. I am fascinated by your upbringing, the era you grew up in, the macro and micro climates that you grew up in, not the fucking weather, I mean the economics and the politics and that climate. I'm fascinated what made me, my mom, my dad, being an immigrant from Russia, being in America, being in Jersey, like, like the friends I ran into, baseball cards becoming popular, allowing me to sell something. I'm fascinated the environment that created me in this completely emotional place of enormous strength, which is the engine and the oxygen that allows me to be successful in business uh, and life. Uh, and then what is it that other people don't have or didn't have? And I see it, I see how my grandmother parented my dad, I see my sister's and brother's DNA different than mine, you know, just timing and things of that nature. And so I'm going heady for my opening spot because I need you to understand, too many of you are gonna take fucking notes right now and think it's about a Facebook ad. Too many of you are about to take a note and be like, okay, Google how to use Instagram influencers. We'll get to that, I'm about to talk about that. But if your foundation isn't right, you have no shot of long-term success. If you're not in a place where you believe this, and look, this is super, like I'm even like throwing up on my, to be very frank, here's what's happening in my head. I'm listening to what I'm saying right now, I'm like, this fucking sucks. I'm being serious. I'm being really fucking serious with you actually. And I'm saying that because I'm like, man, it's so, what I'm talking about is like so hard to like touch, right? But it's still my truth, it's what I believe. Like you're either on the offense or you're on the defense. You either see all these technologies as the gateway drug to your entire future or you're upset that it was much easier to do this on email and SEO and you don't like this social media thing, right? I don't like these new things either. I built my dad's business from a three to a $60 million business on email and Google AdWords. I didn't want YouTube to come along. I didn't want Twitter to come along, right? I didn't want Facebook to come along. I didn't want Snapchat to come along. I don't want voice and Alexa skills and podcasts to come along. I'm not looking forward to VR. The problem is technology and the way we live doesn't care about my opinion or my feelings and it doesn't care about yours either. And so you can walk around earth and judge, oh it's so sad that all these kids can't communicate because they're on the phone anymore. Or you can walk out tonight and have dinner and see people at a table and nobody's talking to each other and they're all on the phone and you're judging. And you could talk about a day and age when it was simpler and nicer and all this. Nobody gives a fuck. (laughs) And if you don't adjust to the reality of the situation, you will be completely left behind. And that's it, too many people are executing or hoping or trying to figure out how to live in a world that used to be or the way they wish it was versus attacking the reality of the world. And here is the reality of the world, my friends. The cell phones that you're all holding right now or in your pocket are the remote controls of our society. They are the single most important thing in the world. There's nothing close. Literally, literally, I would rather have somebody roll up on me right now, stab me with a knife and steal my wallet then lose my phone. (laughs) The world is being lived through that device and you can judge it, you can do anything you want, but that's the reality. And if you sit here today and have any ambitions, professionally, personally, whether you wanna sell a course, whether you wanna sell a sneaker, whether you wanna raise money for the PTA, a nonprofit, get somebody elected, whatever you want to happen in life, Whatever you want to happen in life, you first need somebody's attention and then you need to tell them about it. In the written word, in audio or video. This is how the world works and always has. You want something to happen. You need to figure out where the people are to tell them about that thing and then you need to communicate that to them in a compelling enough way that they do the thing that you want them to do. You can do that in the written word, 
You can do that in audio and you can do that in video. That is how it's been. It was called the newspaper, the television, and the radio. Now it's called a blog, a vlog, or a podcast. It's the same thing. Nothing's changed except one thing. Your attention is moving to a new place and leaving an old place. The other thing is, we have not figured out the creative strategies to be successful in this world. The other thing is, there's a lot of people in here who are not self-aware and don't realize they should only be writing and not making videos because they're not good at it. Or reversed. Or reversed. These blanket statements that everybody needs a personal brand or everybody should be doing video, that is ludicrous. What everybody should be doing is deploying self-awareness and figuring out who they are, quadruple downing on what they're fucking good at and trying to get resources to support the stuff they suck at. I've written four, thank you, I've written, thank you, I've written four, you know, when she was like, he's written four New York Times best-selling books, I literally was laughing as I was about to get to the stairs. I'm like, I can't put two fucking sentences together if my life depended on it. But I know how to hire a ghostwriter, and I definitely know how to sit down for nine hours straight and record a book in one fucking sitting, right? You need to figure out how you communicate to the world as an executor. Which medium? Some of you could do all three. Some can do two. But watch what's been happening over the last 10 years. In 2000, or 15, in 2002 to four, it was the era of the blog. It was bloggers. How many people here were a blogger from 2002 to 2005 at any point? Raise your hands. So some of these early pioneers, like they felt the impact, right? Right? You were blogging, that was it. That was the medium, WordPress, or you know, even going back further, like it was just a very important medium. YouTube had been yet to be invented. You know, it cost too much to stream video online. There was no video players. Podcasting then came in 2005 and six, had a little blip, but then right quickly after that, Twitter came out, YouTube came out, and everything shifted to short form writing and video, right? And then in the last two years, audio has risen again. How many people here now listen to a podcast? Raise your hands. How many of those hands did not listen to a podcast three years ago? Raise your hands. Hold them up, actually, you know what? Watch this for visual, we're gonna do this one more time. How many people watched, how many people are listening to a podcast now? Raise your hands. I want people in the front to look around, see what I see, all right? An insane amount. Now, of those people, of the people that now listen to a podcast, stand up if you did not listen to a podcast three years ago. I need you to look around. Because if you want to understand why I'm standing on this stage right now, I didn't say sit down. I'm just kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> if you want to understand why I'm so blessed to sit on this stage, is I have a unique, uncanny, I take no credit, my parents get all the credit, ability to slightly understand what you're about to do before you think you're gonna do it. And so what I do is when I know something's coming, I have humility, and this is a word that I would love for people to look up, understand, and start really becoming religious about. For all my ego and peacocking, for the ones in here who've been paying attention, it is my humility that has allowed me to be successful, not in the way that I interact with you and being kind, because that's kindness, in the humility that when I believe something new is emerging, I take the perceived risk of going there first, spending countless hours with no clear ROI in the short, how many people in here have left ungodly amounts of money because when social came along they said, well what's the ROI of Facebook and Twitter?